Welcome my friends. In this video, we're going to be building this PC. And it doesn't just pack one of the best hardware available right now, like the RTX 4080 from ASUS and the Intel i9-3900K. It's also completely air-cooled. Yes, we're air-cooling the 13900K. And it's actually not as bad as you think. But the nicest thing about this PC build is this case, the Fractal North case. Oh, it's beautiful. Do you know what else is beautiful? This sponsored segment. Who keys the cheapest way to license your windows? Check them out in the description below or learn how to do it later on in this video. Okay, I hope you are excited because I am very, very excited. We're gonna start with the motherboard and as you can see, my motherboard is already out of the box and that's because I've actually skipped one step in this building process. I have updated the BIOS of this behind the scenes, but you can easily do it through QFlash, which means just plug the USB in and then just it updates the BIOS without having any of the CPU or RAM or anything installed. If you don't know how to do that, I've got a tutorial on my channel how to do that. So for the CPU, we're gonna be using the Intel i9 13900K, the best of the best CPUs we can get. There we go. Interestingly, with these Intel CPUs, I like to take the cover off before I slide it down because it doesn't always pop off exactly as I want. So there we go. For the OS SSD, we're going to be using the Cardia Z440 from Team Group. It's super fast SSD and Gen 4 drive, about 4.5 thousand megabytes per second. And it's fast enough to just be very, very fast drive, okay? but it's also very, very good for terabytes written spec. So if you're writing over a lot of big files on the big OS SSD, uh, which I don't think we're gonna do in this case, but then this SSD is very, very good for creators. And we've got a massive heatsink here for that. So we'll just pop that back in there. Look at that heatsink on this motherboard that's popped up. Oh, I actually forgot to mention which motherboard we're gonna be using. This is the Gigabyte Aero D Z690 motherboard. And for some reason, Gigabyte hasn't made this motherboard for the Z790 yet. There's Aero G, but it's a completely different one. This is like the high-end crate motherboard from Gigabyte. And Gigabyte, please don't stop producing these motherboards. Please keep going with the high-end motherboards as well. We need more competition in the high-end. We've got Asus ProArt. Gigabyte is doing this with the Aero series. So this is the nice design that's going to fit into our PC case theme, which is going to be kind of like a black and white and a bit of gray going around there. And there's no better motherboard, I don't think, than this one here. We're going to be installing secondary SSD as well. And this is the Seagate Firecuda 530, which I think is one of the best uh, Gen 4 SSDs, just because it's got ridiculous speeds up to 7.3 gigabytes or something like that. So absolutely maxing out the Gen 4 bandwidth, X4, you know, PCIe slot. And it's also got ridiculous terabytes written bandwidth, which basically means that if you are a creator, you can rewrite 70% of the drive every single day for the next five years. And it's completely fine, which is absolutely ridiculous. So this true terabyte drive here, which means you can write on it about 1.4 terabytes every single day and it's going to be fine. I've used this before and these thermal pads are already off. Now the RAM. To fit in our white color theme, I'm going to be using this kit from V Color. So this is actually a kit of four, but half of them are fake and half of them are real. So basically we're going to still have four slots, but two of them are real. As you can see, two of the sticks don't have any pins on them except four of them. So I'll just install them into the these slots there and make sure you install the right or the real dim slots into the right slots. So don't confuse them with the um, fake ones. So this way we can still get the look of four sticks but the stability of two sticks of RAM. These are 6,000 megahertz or mega transfers per second RAM sticks and they look beautiful. White and fast. Unfortunately, I don't have 64 gigabytes here, but if you do want 64 gigabytes of white DDR5, I'm gonna leave some 
in the description below. By the way, I'll leave all the links that I'm talking about here in the description below. What comes next is the cooling for this. And I am not going with water cooling on this one. We're going to be using air cooling and we have this here. This is Deep Cool AK620 Zero Dark. And it's not just a really, really powerful cooler, but it's also very, very nice looking cooler. So it's one of the high end air coolers and it's like direct competitor of the Noctua NHD 15. But because we're looking for this very, very minimal design, very minimal look, then look at this one. This just looks really, really nice when we're gonna install that on the top there. Okay, it does come with thermal paste, so you do have to apply it yourself. And it comes with a screwdriver as well. So they've really gone with the Noctua style to try to, uh, you know, give you the screwdriver as well. So the back plate of the cooler comes with um, like screw holes and it comes on default on LGA 1200 holes, but you can just push the screws, boom, out, very easy. And now you've got a back plate for the 1700. Instructions are very nice to understand and these standoff screws already have pre-applied little uh, washers, plastic washers underneath. So if you put them on top of the uh, motherboard, you're not actually scratching the motherboard, which is very, very good. And then you've got these little bars that go on top of the standoffs. But the cool thing is there's actually CPU on the side like marked and little arrows so you know like which way the CPU is going to go. So these go on the sides and the LGA 1700 will go on the second slot to so basically make sure that your screw does go in the middle of those. Use the screwdriver to tighten them up. Okay, now thermal paste application time. Recently, I have started using a different uh, thermal paste method of the application. I like to spread it out, especially with the Intel CPUs. They really want a good thermal paste kind of coverage just because um, you want all the heat as good of a contact of the CPU to the cooler as possible because all the heat we need it out, you know, because they run quite hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put like a kind of a line on one side of the CPU. That is plenty there. And there should be enough here for another application, but you can get these spatulas, like buy them online off Amazon, or it comes with some of the CPU coolers. So what I'm gonna do now is just literally spread it around all over the CPU. In my instance here, I'm actually gonna take my RAM out of the way because it's easier to get to than much better. Yeah, I recommend maybe not installing the RAM before the thermal paste application. Once you've got good coverage of the CPU, take your cooler, make sure you do peel this off, the protection of that, and then goes on this way. And then slowly do turns on one side and the other side and screw it down. Okay, it's screwed down all the way and now we can put our RAM back. And as you can see from this angle, the RAM coverage for these towers is very, very good. And also these deep cool like uh, blue logos, blue teal logos, they should be on the bottom rather than on the top. Otherwise you'll install it the wrong way. And now you've got two wires coming out from there. We're going to put these to CPU fan and then CPU optional fan. So basically they are exactly the same fan header. So exactly the same fan curve will be applied to both and then the rest of the cable we can just hide underneath there if you look at that that is super super clean looking build like you've got the nice white on there nice black over there the ram is actually covered so we're not going to get you know too much of just rgb flash in your face but then nicely underneath there we get a little bit of a shine on there next up our beautiful pc case this is probably the nicest pc case ever made in human history. This is the Fractal North. The case is bare bones now and before I'm going to put the motherboard in, I want to do a few things and install a few cables and fans. First of all, we're going to replace these front fans. It comes with 240 millimeter black fans, 
but to get a better effect from the front, I have three Be Quiet Silent Wings, or Light Wings actually. These are the high RPM versions with 250 RPM uh, in there. So these are going to be in the front there, giving us a nice halo through the front, just a little bit of a taste of an RGB. And then on the back of the case and on top of the case, we're going to be installing the Fantex T30 fans. These ones over here, because as you can see, the case isn't actually uh, black inside, it's grey. And these fans fit in the colour theme so, so well. So, Fractal, I'm not sure if you meant to do this so that everyone uses your competitors' fans, but these Fantex T30 fans fit into this colour theme perfectly. And because you don't actually see the colour of the front fans, because you've got this panel in the front there, the front fans can be whatever colour because we can see them through the front light up there, so they're going to be really nice. So let's install a few fans and then let's keep going. I've realised these aren't the worst case fans, just because they go 1700 RPM so they're slightly faster than usual case fans. You could use them as well, but we're going for something a little bit more premium. The only thing here is that because these fans have um, a bracket behind the fans, so you're gonna lay the fans on the bracket rather than behind the bracket, which means that you're not screwing the screws in from the front, but from the behind, so if you've got 320 millimeter fans in the front here, like that, then you'll have to screw in the last ones there, like that. It's totally doable, but it is a little bit harder than usual cases. So I do think it is slightly easier to install the motherboard here first. And before we're going to install the fans, it's very, very good idea to put in some of these um, power cables, like especially this CPU cable there. And for the power supply, we're going to be using this uh, Fantex Amp 1000 white power supply because we're going to get white PSU cables, which is going to be nice as well. And in this Fractal North case, there's very, very limited room for your CPU cables. So it's good to put them in first there. Perhaps it's even easier to put these in before you install the motherboard in this case. Might be even easier. Alrighty, and let's try to install these fans on the top there as well. So I have simplified a little bit of the wiring of this uh, build here. I've actually daisy chained all these three exhaust fans together and this makes the cable management very very easy and simple from there basically one cable goes there system fan one and then chains all of these together now in terms of audio it's not the best because you want to you know kind of get all the fans running at different speeds if you haven't seen my fan configuration guide yet then go check it out and I'm gonna do the same with the front fans. I'm just for the simplified reason for here. I'm gonna daisy chain them all together so that I can have just basically two fans configuring intake and outtake. But while we are here, let's also install the GPU. For that, we're gonna be using the RTX 4080 from ASUS. This is the ASUS TUF RTX 4080. This fits in with the design here of the gray theme. And that's why I think this is one of the nicest cards. And this card really shows how big graphics cards you can fit in there because this is actually the same cooler as the 4090. So you can literally get this card in the 4090 version. Obviously you'd have four of these plugs then rather than three of them, but the card would be exactly the same. Now it would be nice if you didn't have to use this adapter and you'd have like direct, you know, 12 pin cable from the PSU, which I don't have at the moment, which makes this build slightly more sloppy in terms of the design. The nice thing is that because there's this panel that's going to come in here, I'm going to bend these cables just slightly towards this front over there. And then most of the cable excess will be behind the panel there. You might be seeing a little bit of it and I'll just take the cables up from there rather than from that hole underneath there, which I think will make the cable much, much, or cable management much, much nicer and simpler in here.
Lastly, we do have the PSU here. This is the white amp from Fantex, amp 1000 watt power supply, which is good enough to power all of these components, even if you have you know, uh, 1419 there, this is powerful enough to power that and our very power hungry CPU. The good thing is this case actually has the frame for the PSU. So you can just take the frame off, screw it in. Obviously we're gonna be installing the PSU fan down so it can pull cool air from the bottom. You can do it the other way as well. But I think I don't want this PSU start to pull then um, air from the back of the case but I want it to be like exhaust from there. Otherwise it's gonna pull some dust in because I think we have plenty of exhaust. I'd like it to be positive in terms of air pressure. Interesting thing here is that this PSU only has um, five PCI or CPU power cords. So eight pin EPS or PS PCI power cables, which means that if I want to have four for the GPU, which you should, or if you had run like a 1490, you need four separate ones to go to this uh, GPU, then you'd only have one for the CPU, which isn't a big deal really, but for the 13900K, it would be nice to have the secondary optional uh, four pin for the CPU as well. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal, but just an interesting analysis. Having this white PSU really fits in with like the back panel of this motherboard and the PC case as well. It looks like this really, really fits into the theme of this PC build. Okay, now let's do some uh, plug-in of cables and uh, a bit of uh, cable management, and then we should get our first post soon. Okay, last cable that I have to install is this uh, front audio here. And as you know, the port is just behind there. But the hole behind the motherboard is small enough or too small for this to go through. So what you will have to do is take tempor temporarily the screws of the PSU off from the back. So you can pull the PSU out just slightly to push this through and install it and then you can push this back and then put the back panel back. So I've got the power cord in. I've pressed the power on and now is the moment of truth to see if we can get a post. Okay, second power on. This time the RGB from the front came on as well. So the front LEDs are blue. There we go, alrighty. Went off again, got to the BIOS and then it switched off. I guess that is good. Because it's like a random windows of one of the Zotac uh, small form factor PCs. What I'll do now is just wipe the windows off so I don't have any random drivers there or wrong drivers there. And then we'll put a clean windows on. So I'll see you in a moment. So now here comes the part where your PC is actually built, but we need to activate the windows. And often when you see the windows keys online, you can see that they're going for $150, $200. And you're thinking, oh my word, do I really need to pay that? No, you don't. Let me show you how. So basically this video is sponsored by WhoKeys and you might have seen this on the channel before. If you're new, welcome. This is who's sponsoring the channel and they sell lots of things in there, lots of different keys, but we're focusing on the Windows 11 keys here. How to find the links to get to the WhoKeys? The best way to do is if you click on the video, any of the videos on my channel, you'll click on the video. Once you're at the video, you click down this show more button to see the description of the video. If you don't know where the description is, YouTube's made it slightly complicated these days to, to see it. But you just show more and then you can see this um, key here. Windows 10 Pro key. You can click on that one. I've opened it in a new tab for now. There's Office 19 Pro. If you're into Microsoft Office as well, we can get that much cheaper there. And then the package as well. If you want Windows 10 and Microsoft Office, then you can get that there. But here's the page. And then basically, by now, here's the card. Now, most importantly, make sure that you use TN20 to get a 25% off because $22 is already cheap. It's already 10 times cheaper than what you can see on New York, for example. You press apply. Boom, and now you get the key for about $17, less than $17, which is ridiculous. You submit your order, choose the payment method, and then purchase this. Now, I have already done this, and once you have done it, you can go to user center. 
purchased orders. And as you can see, I've got plenty of these already purchased there. And I'm just going to click on the top one there to view keys and codes. And then you can see the codes on the bottom in there. Now you might be wondering, is this legit? Like, can we trust this service? Is this like mental? Actually, if you know the channel called Tech City, then Tech City has already made a video about checking them out if these keys are legit. So basically, he actually called Window a uh, Microsoft to verify that these keys are legit and so on. So you can check out the video over there, but the short story is, yeah, it's completely fine to do that. Once you've get your key, copy it, select and copy it, and then go into your Windows. By the way, this works with Windows 11 as well as Windows 10. I've got it working with both of them, so you don't need to worry about that. You type in activation settings, there you go, my Windows is already activated, but if yours isn't, here's the thing, it says not activated there on Windows there. You go change product key, paste the key in there, press next, activate, and then what you should be seeing is Windows is activated. There we go, Windows has been activated, that's how simple this is. And that's how you can get Windows as cheap as $17. So you'll never have to pay the retail prices again. There we go. I just saved you over $150. You're welcome. Check who keys out in the description below. So here it is. As you can see, the antenna of the motherboard fits really good with the case design as well. And as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. I've got the side panel on now here as well, just to get the feel of the airflow so we can test really what the airflow is like. So while we are here, um, let's have a look at a little bit of the temperatures while the RGB thing is um, installing in the background there. You can see that right now, just using this system, uh, we've pulled maximum of 62 watts. So this is just like, you know, working with uh, windows and so on. But interestingly, look at that the minimum package power has been 3.1 watts which is absolutely ridiculous so right now i've got all the bios at the default and i think it's gonna actually uh, be quite bad in terms of the um like power delivery what i mean by that is that it's gonna push much more power through than it's actually needed so let's see that multi-core test start and then hardware info here let's have a look okay we're like instantly 100 degrees 338 watts ridiculous now we did get 339,000 points here but we're like instantly thermal throttling as well which is ridiculous it's only the p cores 7 6 and 5 here that were thermal throttling let's have a look at what were the temperatures of the cores so these were 197 the rest of them were 95 89 so as you can see there's loads of wattage being pushed to these cars there also if we are looking at the clock speeds then we can see that we did hit uh, 5.8 on two of these cars here which is very very good this 338 watts is absolutely ridiculous and that's what we're going to be changing now just a few settings in the bios i'm going to show you in a moment how the cpu can actually be air cooled but just we're telling BIOS, look, just don't go mental. We can still get good performance, but we'll just limit the power a little bit. But as you can see from the task manager, Intel iGPU is on by default from the motherboard's BIOS settings, which is actually very, very good. And ASUS, you should be doing the same thing uh, because if you have a creator motherboard, I don't know which creator wouldn't want the iGPU to not be on by default. And as you can see here, the iGPU is on by default, which is very, very good. And we've got the RTX 1490 here on as well, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Whenever you get a new PC as well, uh, make sure that your startup apps, you don't run random apps. So for example, Cortana, we don't know, want that. Microsoft Teams, definitely disable. Microsoft Edge, disable as well. OneDrive, disable, don't need that. Uh, we'll leave that one on, that one on, Chrome, that's what I need, but these things I always turn off, just so you know. The RGB is working as well. Everything, I've put everything white, as you can see from the B-roll. I've put the graphics card RAM and the front fans all white, because I think that is the nicest looking there. And interestingly, as you can see, even if you're on a slight angle, you don't actually see the front 
um, LEDs there. So now you can see the front as well, which is very, very nice as you can see here. Let's restart and go into the BIOS. XMP on, uh, 6000 megahertz off the RAM, first of all. Second of all, what we're gonna be doing is finding uh, some options for the CPU overclocking. So, enhanced multi-core performance here, as you can see. So this is um, like trying to push as much of the like multi-core as possible. And that's why it's going very, very high like wattage there. What we're gonna do is uh, power limit two here. We're gonna change that to 253 watts. That's what it's meant to be doing. And then TDP, we're gonna push that one as well to, so TDP there was 125 watts. So I'm just gonna put it 180 there, that'll do. DRAM, all the rest of the things are completely fine. So now let's press F10 and then see what's gonna happen. Alrighty, let's get Cinebench open and the hardware info open and let's see what has changed. Starting the multi-core and let's see what's gonna happen here now. As you can see, it's pushing 253 watts there like we did before and look at the temperatures, completely fine. Oh, interesting. It's letting the TDP to be 180 watts now as we saw before. So let's see what the score is going to be. 35,887. So we've lost about 4,000 points, which is about 10% in multi-core performance. So let's change the TDP back to auto. So basically we're saying that, you know, push as much as you want power through, but the PL2 power limit, which means that's the turbo boost out power limit is 253 watts. So this TDP, we're gonna put that to auto. So it's even simpler settings than before, just the package power limit is 253 watts, like what Intel is saying, let's go. So, alrighty, here we are again. Uh, let's try this again now. We've got Cinebench open, start, 253 watts. Look at that, air cooling, 84 degrees, 86 degrees. Right now we're pulling about the same as like AMD 7950X. 37, 38,000 pretty much. Let's try this one more time. Let's see if there's anything in the background. 253, all core 5.1, 5.2. Some of the cores are going 5.2, 5.1 gigahertz. 37,922, pretty good. Now, right now we're getting no thermal throttling, as you can see, uh, maximum temperatures there, 89 degrees. So right now here, we can see that the power max is set to 253 there, as you can see, and it's going there unlimited time. But let's see how much can we push this. Let's put there 260 watts. I'm not really overclocking the CPU. I'm just putting some boundaries to it, basically. That's what I'm saying. I'm not gonna adjust any of the voltages because that's what I think is gonna be reducing the stability of the system. So we've just added 260 watts, that's it. Let's press start and let's see what we're gonna see here. 260 watts, 85 degrees there, 5.2, 5.1, a few cores, how many? One, two, three, four cores are trying to go 5.2 gigahertz. And then four to 4.1 on all of the E cores. 37,000, look at that. But looks like we have thermal throttle there on one of those cores. P core 6 has thermal throttled. But it's funny that it's thermal throttled because uh, we haven't hit any like hot temperatures. Let's see this again. So we did hit 92 degrees and we've got 37,942. So what I would do is I would actually set the limit to something like 300. 255 watts there we go 37,942 now as you can see we are like about 90 degrees there package 89 and look at that we've only lost like 100 or something at that point so looks like actually the 253 watts what intel is recommending is like the best option there or the kind of the best middle ground when it gets to power efficiency there we go we've lost like 200 points and we're pulling 253 watts. Now that's the multi-core score. Let's see single core score and let's see if that's gonna be any different. See, we are still pushing 5.8 gigahertz here 
on one car. Should be two cars, really, but let's have a look. Wow, now that's very interesting. When I did my testing, I was doing all the testing without any power limits, right? And the single core score for this Intel uh, was actually 2170. So 21,070 points. Right now, it's 30 points higher and I'm running much more power efficiently. So that's seriously impressive. I'm gonna put the multi-core score test on there as well uh, while we're running that. And then while this is on, let's try this as well. Fermark, let's do 1080p, GPU stress test, go. CPU is pulling 253 watts. GPU is pulling 300 watts. Very, very cool. Core temperatures, so core P core five is a 92 watts there. Oh, sorry, 92 degrees, 93 degrees. We're not thermally throttling here right now. I'll just, the CPU is going 5.1 and then four gigahertz on the E cores. We are thermally throttling, interesting. Which one is thermally throttling? Seven and five, 94 and 95. Why is it thermally throttling it? Because TJ Maxx is 105 or 100 degrees, so it's got still five to go. I don't know why it's thermally throttling it. So this is a good test now for the air cooling because we're creating a lot of hot air inside the PC case. We're pulling 300 watts from the GPU and the GPU is right now about 63 degrees. It's probably gonna plateau somewhere over there. It's not gonna go any higher but we're just gonna see what the CPU is gonna be. Interestingly there, even though we're thermally uh, throttling, you can see the average point right now is, let's see, this finished 36,929 points. So we've lost maybe around 700 points, something like that. So is this cooling good? I think this air cooling is pretty, pretty good. Okay, we've just jumped to 97 degrees there. Let's see, is the GPU 63.5 degrees? My ambient is also 24.8 degrees, which is quite warm. 85 degrees. As you can see, the GPU is going only 64 degrees maximum here. It's not gonna go any higher unless our ambient's gonna go higher because our ambient is um, rising right now. Any, every second or any minute is getting higher and higher and higher. But this is like the worst case scenario, but this just really shows how good of an airflow this case is. Like I can feel quite warm air being pushed out from the back there again. I can feel the air being pulled in from the front there. So the airflow is absolutely fantastic. Even though the GPU is absolute hot cake inside there, our CPU is still actually keeping up there as you can see. Look at that, this load, we didn't thermal throttle. At first we are thermal throttling, then we aren't. Okay, look, there's two minutes to go now. Uh, we've hit 96 degrees maximum on this. Okay, I'm gonna stop the GPU, which means the GPU is now calming down. 96, let's see if we go any further. 97, 98, what's our GPU temperature? 34 degrees, it is calming down all the time there. 98 this run let's have a look 96 it's not as hot as before what's coming out from the back see this was 95 let's see this run look at that this was 95 maximum 93 maximum that was 93 maximum as you can see the case has cooled down from the inside 94 maximum we're not hitting that 98 anymore and as you can see our average was 36,921. So we've only lost marginal amount of performance in multi-cores and this is very, very synthetic performance uh, test. You'll never see that in video export or anything else. So I'm very happy with the air cooling of this case and the air cooler there. I think it's completely fine to air cool the 13900K. <laughs> So the build is done and the few conclusions here are and like feedback of the build so if you're doing this what you should be looking out for or just some of the tips you know if you want to learn about pc building and so on first of all air cooling this pc i was seriously impressed by just that it is possible when i did the testing obviously uh, i've done the testing with all the 13th gen now but all of the testing was done with a 360 millimeter ai or with fantex t30 fans and like the best cooling possible and i thought this is surely not possible air cooling but as you can see it's completely possible it's completely fine we just have to kind of stick to the intel's limits rather than just letting the motherboard just go absolutely bonkers and pull this ridiculous power through which doesn't really give us that much more performance it's only just like to flex really secondly 
I really like how they have designed the hard drive 3.5 inch base in the back or underneath this case. Instead of having them stack on top of each other, they've put them like lay them next to each other on the floor. You can put extra ones on top as well, but if they are on the floor, what that means is that you actually have lots of space for your other PSU cables to go over the cables and give you lots of space there. Often when they're on top of each other, that's it. That's the space you have to work with. But now there's all the space above it that you can still stick cables but you're not losing any of the kind of you know hardware limitations or just having one hard drive you can still have two of them and lots of space there big kudos to fractal and third of all the rgb and the design of this pc now once the build is complete i still absolutely love it and i think it's very very nice but now when I've, I've had it for a little bit, I'm starting to think, is this something that we could have done better? And, and I'd love to know from you in the comment section below, what would you do differently or what part would you use differently? First of all, the front RGB, as you can see here, but I kind of wish the effect through this like sauna seat would be a little bit better than what we have over here. Obviously it is a little bit there and I'm just not sure if I like this design here because we don't get this like big kind of round circles effect of rgb i'm just wondering if we should just go like fantex t30 fans in the front there as well and kind of make it non-rgb in the front there as well which leads me to the next thing should we have it no rgb at all i mean i kind of like that there is a little bit of light inside the case that comes from the ram sticks there it looks really really nice does it look more minimal if we go no rgb and get like corsa vengeance you know the non-rgb just yeah, like the basic sticks could be better then the fantex t30 fans really really fit inside this case it's like they're meant for each other the inside of the case looks exactly the same color and the color just fits really really well with the Fantex T30 because they're both gray uh, rather than black like what this inside of the case is and very similarly the Asus TUF series 40 series cards fit inside this case very very well I like that this is like a silver gray these two colors are very very similar the only thing I do want to say about this GPU is the gaming kind of just logos and text on it why do we have to have tough gaming here like what does it mean does anyone of you like love it just make it tough don't make it tough gaming I'm honestly the more I am doing this the more I'm against this gaming design just make it a design but don't call it gaming design okay just just say tough all that it's fine because it looks tough you know we get it like kind of industrial design and but also the graphics card is very very well built there is no sag of the graphics card even though i've got no like sag bracket you can see the gpu is hardly moving here and you don't really need a sag bracket which is amazing looking at the size of this gpu and just because the back kind of brackets or the two slots they're really screwed in well with the design of the rest of the graphics card which means once you screw it in the back over there it's not loose and that's fantastic and last thing about the design is the PSU cables now you could have like a last little nice touch on this if you add your own custom cables to them like the 24 pin ATX and even this like GPU cable there you could get like a cable from cable mod to just have it nicely there so you don't have any of these kind of uh, adapters here too too short nvidia if you make this adapter just make it longer make it long enough so we can hide it underneath the case so it's not just dangling halfway in the air I, i'm just not a big fan of this uh, adapter as well as the eps and atx cables it would be nice if it was some kind of like a a gray and white perhaps kind of color in there just if you really want a nice pc you know custom make your cables from cable mods i think i'm going to nickname this case as a sauna case but now when i've built in this white version of this i'm really wanting to build inside the black version of the case as well so if we're going to do a black version of this case then what parts should be used for the black version let me know in the comment section below by the way, all the parts that I have used in this video are linked in the description below if you want to check it out or if you want to pick any of these out yourself. And if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC, then check out the PC build guide in the description below. You can configure the budget to yourself, like whatever budget you have, there's a build for you. You can configure it, upgrade it, downgrade it. And if you want to use this case in those builds, then just swap out the case for what I'm recommending in those videos to this case and voila off you go just enjoy and you've got a beautiful pc 
for you. Thanks to Keys for sponsoring this video. Check them out in the description below. If you don't want to pay full price for Windows activation licenses, then check them out in the description below and you'll pay about one tenth of the price. Yes, that's 90% off. Check them out in the description below. Bye-bye.